The tooling is quite challenging. This problem of getting into the vessel is difficult. And you need to go all the way down to the bottom and scan around to see what it looks like, you know, how thin are the walls, and, uh, and, and what, is that, what does that look like? Is, it, is the vessel in good shape? Is it just one spot? These were all the questions that were asked. So the original tool was designed to come down the tube, collapsed, and then when it reached the bottom, it extended out and could do a sweep. It wasn't sufficient. To, to do the entire circumference of the vessel. And so the second version of the tool was developed, which has a, an extra degree of freedom. So it comes down, but it can also sweep out like this. And it's a little bit longer, so you can do more of a sweep in one shot than you could before. That way we should be able to get up under some of the items that were in the way for the first inspection. I think the innovative part of what we're doing is just how to get these articulating tools down such a small diameter pipe, such a restricted geometry. When we brainstorm and come up with conceptual designs and select one based on whatever criteria we have, then the designers come back and they use their software and they build it in 3D. In this particular case with the vessel, what they were also trying to do was model the actual NRU vessel with all of the pipes and cups and everything that's in there so that we could then see whether the tool we were building fit inside that hole. When the arm comes out, is there anything in the way? So you can assess the whole situation before you actually go in. Once the decision's made that, yep, this is going to work and that's the tool we're going to go with, then they have to take that 3D model and they have to turn them into detailed drawings, which are like the blueprints and specify the materials. You have to make sure you use the right materials when you go into a reactor vessel. Um, some materials you're, you're not allowed to introduce into the vessel. And they have to specify every nut and bolt and and, and every detail of, of the actual tool. Then we send those drawings when we're, we're happy with them. They've been checked and, and, and we're happy with those drawings. They go to the machine shop where they will fabricate all of these components. Then they come back and we assemble them and then we do some function tests, make sure that everything works in real life the way we thought it would work on the screen. With the NRU reactor down, our contribution to the world supply of isotopes is, uh, is, is not, not happening, so we're not able to produce any isotopes. We do feel that stress and that urgency that we want to make sure we do everything as quickly as possible and, and get really good results so that they can move forward, repair it, and, and we can start producing those isotopes again. But it's, it's very, very challenging. The position of this leak is, is it really in an awkward place, so if it was at the top of the vessel, just below the opening, it would have been easy peasy, go in and you'd be able to see, no problem. But this is, you know, close to the bottom. You have to really get down there. You have to know where you are. And, and while you're down there inspecting, you should inspect the whole thing, right? Like we, we inspect where the leak is, but, but we're going to take the time and, and look all the way around. People really seem to love what they're doing. They care about it and they're really focused on this particular problem. We've, we've dropped everything to address this problem and we're seeing it till the end, till there's a solution.